Hello everyone and welcome to Eorzea Armoire, a series about the background of some of Highland's more epic and dense weapons, armor, and artifacts. We'll be investigating the lore of these items both within Final Fantasy XIV and the Final Fantasy franchise in general, as well as the amazing and sometimes obscure real world people events and artifacts upon which they are based. Many summoners were surprised when Heaven's Ward came around and rather than producing an array of new eggies, they found themselves progressing in a very different and novel direction. It might be equally surprising that the animal weapon, which they will spend much of this expansion wielding and upgrading, is not a compendium of ritual magic or demonic summoning rites, but a draconomicon, taken loosely from Latin as a study of dragons. This name is derived, of course, from the Necronomicon, H.P. Lovecraft's appropriation of the lesser key of Solomon. We might suppose that since Heaven's Ward is so fixated on dragons and the Dragon Song War, that this is a repetition of the theme, and the Draconomicon is a relic of old Ishgard, but things are rarely quite so simple in Eorzea. There are two particular implications of this weapon that I want to explore today, one quite obvious, and the second less so. Firstly then, the Draconomicon is an optional source book for Dungeons and Dragons first published in 1990 and updated for subsequent editions. The fourth edition of D&D saw the release of two volumes of the Draconomicon focused on chromatic and metallic dragons respectively, and the fifth edition is yet to see an updated version. The homage is clear enough. D&D is the father of RPGs, a titan of fantasy, and many iconic creatures and concepts from the Final Fantasy series are lifted directly from its material. The Draconomicon contains a great deal of content which conceivably and very likely inspired the development of Heaven's Ward, from art, physiology, life cycle and abilities, to even the draconic language and religion, in which both Bahamut and Tiamat play central roles as ancestor deities. I find most interesting in the third edition of Draconomicon a detailed description of the eye of a dragon, although it does not play the same essential role as those of a dragon native to Hydaelyn. It also contains a wealth of details about various breeds and genuses of dragons and draconic creatures and slaves, their habits, lairs, tactics and weaknesses, details which would be doubtlessly coveted by any Ishgardian. I've invited regular Dungeons and & Dragons and general expert RPG streamer Evil Squeegee, a man with far more knowledge in the subject than I, to elaborate. What is the Draconomicon? It's a Nomicon for dragons. Nomicon is like a culinary convention. This book is all about cooking up dragon be- uh, actually, this book is about all kinds of dragon stuff. Legends, lore, stories, tactics, classes, monsters, you name it. The three most important books you need to play Dungeons & Dragons are the book about playing, the book about dungeons, and the book about dragons. Dragons are metal as all get out and they're the most iconic form of danger and power there is. Every culture has dragon myths. They're like giant fire-breathing flying dinosaurs with magic. Think they pack enough damage to be considered a weapon in Final Fantasy XIV? I do, but it better be an axe. I'm sorry, Squeegee, but uh, it's not an axe. It is still, in fact, a book. Now, this kind of thing would be all well and good for an Ishgardian Dragon Hunter, but our Draconomicon is in the hands of a summoner, with a much broader range of adversaries that might make it seem narrow and limited. It is here that I think we have to remind ourselves of the origins of the Eorzean Summoner, and that is, of course, in the military campaigns of the ancient Allegan Empire. In the course of their expansion, the Allegans encountered a force equivalent to that of the Dravanian Horde in the Dragons of Mericidia, the progeny of Bahamut and Tiamat. When we refer back to the original Draconomicon and the Draconic Pantheon of the Dungeons and Dragons canon, we see that there are only two great worms of Hydaelyn which correspond, Bahamut and Tiamat. Alug very literally dominated the Mericidians, enslaving them with Neuralinks and reducing them to drones. Between the tactical study of these dragons in battle and the physiological studies of them following their enslavement, the Allegans must have had a very nearly perfect understanding of the Mericidians. I believe that our Draconomicon is the opus of this knowledge. Just as the goblins' animation of Alexander is a reflection of their knowledge of the designs contained within the Enigma Codex, in other words, of their understanding of Alexander, so too did the Mericidians form from their intimate knowledge of their father the terrifying simulacrum of the Dreadworm Elder Primal. Given the depth of Alex's study of the Mericidians, the Draconomicon must be to Bahamut what the Enigma Codex is to Alexander. And just as the Codex allows the Illuminati goblins to better weaponize Alexander, 
there is someone else that has found over the course of Heaven's Ward a way to weaponize the essence of Bahamut, the Summoner. Given that the Summoner traditionally uses the ether of their own body to give form to an Eggie, the power that the Eggie can achieve is steeply limited. With the assistance of the scholar Yumitra, however, we discover an ancient technique by which a Summoner might reach new heights of power, not by channeling a Primal's essence into a new form, but into their own body. It is by channeling the essence of Bahamut and entering the Dreadworm Trance that the Summoner is able to defeat four servants of Laha Brea at once. I believe that by studying the Draconomicon, the Summoner is capable both of drawing on Bahamut's essence more quickly and effectively, and of understanding the Draconic form more intimately. Rather than clumsily tossing around excess ether at their foes, with the Draconomicon the Summoner understands the full range and potential of the Mericidian, and by extension the Dreadworm's abilities, achieving in academic study what the Dragoon aspires to achieve in practical observation. It is the recent growth of the Eorzean Summoner then, and the mastery of the Dreadworm Trance which makes the Draconomicon such a potent weapon, and it is appropriate that Summoners continue to increase their proficiency with this text throughout Heaven's Ward. Given that the Anima-infused Tome is self-aware, the incremental increase in the power of this weapon over time I believe can be explained both by the Summoner's continued study of it, and by the Tome's soul too becoming more knowledgeable and supplementing its own contents with new notes and clauses. So that's the Draconomicon. I hope you found this episode illuminating and entertaining, and I would like to thank our special guest Evil Squeegee for his contribution. If you're a fan of Dungeons and Dragons, he streams campaigns every week on twitch.tv slash evil squeegee and plays a variety of RPGs almost every day, so go and give him some love. You can check out his archive and highlights on YouTube in the description below. As always, if you have any thoughts or ideas regarding this episode you'd like to discuss with me, shoot us a comment, and furthermore, feel free to leave in the comments any requests for artifacts you'd like to see me cover in this series. I'll be covering each of the animal weapons over the next few months, but I'm perfectly open to talking about any other weapons or armor from Heaven's Ward, even crafting and gathering tools, so tell me what you think. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I'm Ethis, and this has been Eorzea Armoire.